So welcome back to the Backpacking for Beginners video series. And so what we're talking about today is we're talking about clothing. And so I know this is one of those questions that lots of people have is, so what exactly do you wear when you're on the trail? And so let me just summarize first of all before I'm showing you what I wear on the trail. And the big thing you'll hear from this video is to stay away from natural fabrics. Now there are some exceptions of course, but one of the big natural fabrics that I would still recommend of course is wool. The major natural fabric that I'm gonna you're gonna see that I stay away from is specifically cotton. Um, and you'll hear this over and over again, you can Google it yourself. Um, but the big reason to stay away from cotton is because you'll hear the, the saying that cotton kills. And so a lot of the reasoning behind that is because cotton, what it tends to do is it tends to absorb moisture and it tends to stay wet and not dry really quickly. But the big thing that happens is that you get chilled really quickly and hypothermia is the danger. So when you, if you hear people say cotton kills, that's the big reason why. It absorbs moisture, tends to stay wet, and it cools down the rest of your body um, pretty quickly. So I'm gonna start from kind of head to toe, what I wear, what I use. I'm gonna talk specifically about some fabrics um, that I recommend you try as well as brands. Um, but here is kind of what I, I tend to bring. So we're talking three seasons specifically, just because winter is a whole nother ball game. And we'd be spending a lot of time going through certain items, clothing and insulation. So let's talk about the three seasons specifically. So the first thing I always bring is I bring a beanie um, just in case I, I use it specifically for um, sleeping in and I use it as well if it gets really cold and uh, the hat that I carry is not enough, I'll usually bring a beanie. Synthetic, of course. That one's a micro fleece. Gloves are always a, a good thing to have, especially fall and spring. In the summer, I tend not to bring them, um, but just a lightweight glove. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. It just has to be a running glove um, I've used before. These are just new ones that I've gotten and I'm trying out um, just to see how they work for me. A big one is a hat. <laughs> and you know, some people laugh when they see me uh, put this hat on because it's fairly large. Something with a wide brim is what I definitely would recommend. Because what we're talking about here is just exposure to the sun. Um, sure, a ball cap would work. What I found is that the back of my neck, depending on the direction um, of the trail and where I was heading, which just kind of get start to get sunburned. And so this works really well. I chose this. This is the Outdoor Research Sombriole. And it has a very wide uh, rim and it's adjustable and it breathes really well. You see this kind of venting um, here. But I definitely recommend you bring a hat. So these are kind of peripheral things that you don't tend to think about, but I would say you definitely, especially those of you guys who are, who are out west can kind of testify to this. The sun out there looks like it's brutal. And when I've lived out in Colorado, I know it is. And so definitely uh, a wide brims hat, kind of mostly for sun protection. Let's talk about sleeping clothes. And so sleeping clothes are cannot be understated as how important they are. Um, when you get on the trail and you're kind of snuggling down into your kind of down uh, quilt or sleeping bag or whatever, the worst thing that happens is that you have all this dust and natural oils from your body all day, you're sweating, doing whatever, and that can get into your down sleeping bag, it makes it less effective, and also just is, is dirty. So I bring sleeping clothes. And so I wear, once again, really synthetic, and some people wear actual silks. Um, this is just a lightweight polyester. This is the Polar Max, uh, kind of lightweight shirt. And so it does a nice job keeping me fairly warm, um, now, if I, if I felt chilled or cool, I'd put something on over this, of course, but most of the times this is enough. And something very lightweight, something that breathes really well, moisture wicking, um, and just dependable. Um, in terms of an under layer that works really well for sleeping, you can try that. But also what I consider is go to your local Walmart and check out what they have in terms of their, their kind of their hunting clothes or hunting base layer in that general section and they usually have some real tree um, branded gear that works, I'd say, just as well as that. It's slightly heavier, um, but not by much at all. They, I actually wore a real tree um, shirt, it's polyester kind of base layer, for a long time before getting that one, um, just because it worked really well. Next thing I use in terms of sleeping is I get these leggings. These are Under Armour leggings. They don't have to be Under Armour. This is the Under Armour 2.0. I found that this works really well um, for just in general um, 
keeping warm in the temperatures three season that I, I tend to hike and backpack in. Uh, it just does a nice job staying warm. One big thing as well is that in an emergency, if it were to get really, really cold or really wet, and I got really cold, is I wouldn't be afraid to hiking this. It's a bold choice, I know, but I wouldn't be afraid to hike in um, this kind of base layer under my regular hiking clothes if I needed it. So that's something to think about is consider your sleeping clothes as well to be part of your overall system and make sure that when you go out there, you don't forget and think, oh, this is only for sleeping. No, it's something that you can use to keep you warm. Uh, make sure you layer up um, if you're really chilled. Okay, so that was kind of sleeping clothes. And so what we're gonna talk about now is kind of what I wear while hiking. And so this is this is a fairly new item to me, uh, but make sure you get a, a, a sturdy belt. Um, I tend to like the, the nylon type of webbing or the polyester webbing, just because it's fairly light, fairly strong. In a real pinch or emergency, you can use something that it's not gonna break if you need to use it as a sling, if you need to use it as some other function that um, a belt can be used for besides holding your pants. I up. haven't tried this one out yet, but I usually use a nylon uh, webbing of some kind. Hopefully this one will work uh, well for me. This is the, the Grip 6 um, belts. You guys can check those out if you want. Kind of under layer, what this is, this is just a Walmart branded shirt. This is the Russell Dry Power 360. When you hike and you sweat, what you want to make sure that happens is that moisture wicks away and it dries really quickly. That's the key for all the clothes that you're seeing. Um, that's what you want to do. So you don't need expensive gear, you don't need under armor, you don't need all that stuff, but as long as you're making sure that you're getting the right fabrics, polyester, synthetics of any kind, rayon, spandex, anything like that that you know is a non-natural fabric. I mean, smart wool is fine, but I tend to stay just to the synthetic stuff. It tends to stink a little bit more than wool. That's one of the benefits that you know people say with wool. Um, but I like to stay to synthetics and it tends to be a little lighter. Yes, I'm gonna show my underwear on camera. So my underwear, I use uh, boxer briefs and I use the Ex Officio Give and Go, and these are phenomenal. Like, I know here I am talking about underwear and recommending the underwear you wear. If you have the chance to buy a pair of these guys, you have to check them out. They're really breathable. They help you avoid chafing. Um, those of you guys who have had chafing before and have to use Body Glide or something to stop um, chafing especially between your your thighs when you're hiking will know what i'm talking about a pair of these will work really well and they dry really fast and so i usually bring an extra pair of these in my pack um, just you know for every day to switch out i wash one and it dries really fast and then i can wear the other one um, an ex officio give and go phenomenal you want to make sure you buy something that will dry fast wick moisture away especially for your base layer that's probably the most important layer when it comes to wicking moisture away because that's what's in contact with your skin. And then in terms of hiking shirts, and once again, this is what I wear just because I, I like to buy specific hiking shirts either from uh, Columbia or one of the uh, bigger branded kind of names and they tend to be button downs. And so Josh always makes fun of me because he, he asks me if it's, you know, if the hike is gonna be business casual this time. Um, but it's something where it's, it's made for hiking, so I really like it. You see there's the mesh back. It tends to be very breathable, protects you from the sun, um, vented really well. That's what I look for. So these shirts do have the added benefit of you, I always hike in long sleeves and shirts that are, I call convertible shirts. Because what it, hap what it does is that there's a little flap of fabric in here where I can hook around this loop, button back on itself, and I have a short sleeve shirt. So it has the added benefit of keeping me warm if I really need it and becoming a short sleeve shirt um, if I need to change over or something happens where um, I no longer need that sun protection and I just need to cool off even more than I um, already am. Coming to pants. And my gear is kind of all over the, the place. All the stuff you've seen before is synthetic, definitely polyester, definitely things that are synthetic fabrics. A big synthetic fabric that I like a lot is nylon. And so these pants are 100% nylon. And this is just, um, I got this at Meijer. It's a Field and Stream uh, branded pant and they're convertible. So what that means is that they become these zip off shorts. And honestly, I don't use a zip off short feature very much just because, because it's nylon, it's so light, it's so breathable, 
um, that it works really well. I'm sorry to those of you who hike in jeans. I don't know how you do it <laughs> because for me, jeans tend to chafe. They don't breathe really well and it's just not a good option for me. I suggest you look into a pair of hiking pants um, and specifically nylon is something that I really like. Th these are not expensive. These were $20 I think at Meyer. I got it in clearance and they've been all over the country by now and they work very, very well. So check them out. Specifically, specifically the convertible option. If you're someone who likes shorts, I mean, that's fine. You can just zip off the legs and use them that way. I tend not to use that. I maybe have used that option on convertible pants once, maybe. Um, just because they're so lightweight um, and they dry so quickly that they keep me cool. I really don't have to worry about it. Something else to consider is longer pants, longer sleeves, especially with the, the threat of Lyme disease. You wanna make sure that you kind of keep yourself protected. And I've found at times that having longer pants um, helps avoid getting ticks on you just because I soak these in permethrin um, before every season. And um, that way it makes sure that you know, ticks don't stay on me. And I've talked about this in a previous video, but socks, I wear right socks. These are double layer socks. And so what it does is it tends to keep the friction between the sock layers and not your foot and the sock that you're wearing. So I'm a big fan. As well as for shoes, for shoes, and you guys have all seen these, these are my Solomon Speed Cross 3s. I choose trail runners because they're really light and they work really well for me. You have to find what works for you. It could be boots. I've talked about shoes at length before, so if you wanna hear that discussion, I'll link it to the cards here so you know what I'm talking about, choosing the best shoe for you. It's a very personal decision and hopefully you find what works for you. But this works for me. So, Hopefully that was helpful for whoever is watching this video. If you're getting started backpacking or hiking, um, that's kind of what I use and that's what works really well for me. I'm kind of refining my system always. I bring new pieces of gear in. Um, hopefully it was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and comment down below with any questions you may have and subscribe. I hope to keep this um, feature or this series going for a while, answer any questions you have um, about what I use, my gear, and I'll see you guys later. Okay, peace.